Hi, and welcome to 10.6 Consulting. Today we're going to look at constraints in P6, their types, and when and when not to use them. So what is a constraint? A constraint is a special date that restricts the start or complete date of an activity. This date is independent of the activity's current scheduled dates. You set this date manually to whatever date is required. It can affect the critical path of a schedule, and that is where the concern about constraint usage comes from in most of the guidelines for good scheduling. Constraints can be generally categorised into two main groups. The first of these groups is external constraints. These are constraints that are imposed on your project by external situations that are basically outside of your control. Harder constraint types can be used in P6 to represent these items. A few examples of external constraints are contractual constraints, a date imposed on your project by the contract itself. The customer requires certain deliverables to be completed on or before a specific date. Failure to meet these dates can sometimes include a financial penalty. Environmental constraints. These are constraints imposed on projects by environmental agencies or possibly local governments. An example of this is the fish spawning calendar. This policy dictates specific dates when work cannot occur in a river or lake. Seasonal and weather constraints can also be affected with many projects. For example, it may be necessary to shut down certain construction projects during winter months due to freezing temperatures that make work impossible or too dangerous. Legal and administrative constraints can include such items as legal deadlines based upon pending changes in law, approval of permits, submittals, inspections and patent windows. Third-party constraints. These can include subcontractor timelines, manufacturing lead times, and long procurement items. The second of our group is internal constraints. These are typically tactical or technical constraints imposed on the project by internal events or conditions. These are often more controllable than external constraints, but still need to be accounted for in the schedule. You can use softer constraint types in P6 for these items. Constraint types that will highlight the restriction but not lock down the network logic or violate the critical path. Examples of internal constraints include Management targets for achieving a certain strategic objective such as system upgrades or the development of new technology to improve efficiencies. Market conditions can drive constraints on certain types of project where time to market can impact profitability. Inter-project dependencies can be a factor when the deliverables from one project affect the start work in another. Resource skill constraints would be the availability of specialised personnel to perform certain activities within the schedule. Outage periods. These are common constraints found within the electrical utility companies. A lot of project schedules can be affected by, or dependent upon, outage periods when parts of the electrical grid are powered down for repairs. These events frequently feature as hard constraints in many utility company project schedules. When not to use constraints. The following is a sample list of general guidelines about how constraints should not be used in a project schedule. This list is based upon some of the most common misuses of constraints found in the industry. Avoid these and your projects will always be well respected by your peers and your customers alike. Constraints should not be used to falsely set activity dates that can otherwise be met using network logic. Dates should always be calculated by Primavera P6 based upon the relationships they have with two other activities. If there are no external or internal restrictions on the activity, constraints should not be used to lock in desired dates. Re-engineer the network logic to find a way to achieve the desired dates. Constraints should not be used as an alternative to activity relationships. Using constraints in place of activity relationships diminishes the validity of the project schedule. When the project is progressed, activities that are not dependent on preceding activities will not be affected by delays in the schedule. 
Constraints should not be used to hide float. Using finish constraints to hide float is a bad scheduling practice. If activities are exhibiting high float, find viable and realistic successors for the activity. If there is truly no logical successor, link the activity to the project complete activity or milestone and enter a narrative in the P6 notebook area to explain the high float. Constraints should not be used to prevent date changes when the project is updated. Using hard constraints to lock down activities and prevent them from moving when the project is progressed undermines the schedule's data integrity, not to mention the very purpose for building the schedule in the first place. Effective critical path analysis of schedules built this way is virtually impossible, and the schedule will have little value to the project management team. In the end, it all boils down to something very simple. Never use constraints that cannot be justified or explained with reference to a tangible, external or internal date restriction. If you use them for any other purpose, it could be interpreted as gaming the schedule. If you'd like to learn more about Primavera P6, then 10.6 offers some great online training courses. These courses are written by industry experts and offer you all the skills you need to get up and running as a P6 scheduler. For more information, visit our website at 106.com for full details on how to get started.